super soldiers flying, like the, the ones in my book, Superhuman, are, are real. Tribe, I missed you. Don't forget to, to like and, uh, and subscribe if you enjoy the video and comment. I'm still getting used to, to asking and doing that YouTuber thing. I don't know what the statistics are that show that you gotta ask at the beginning of the video and that somehow that leads to more, but uh, it seems like it's working, so I'll, I'll keep going with it. Human flight. Uh, if you are part of the, the Facebook likes page, you, you might have seen that I, I linked uh, to this story yesterday. Um, but it's real, it's not fictional, and, uh, and it's not CG. This is actually um, uh, soldiers from uh, the UK's Royal Marines, and they're, they're demonstrating a, a suit, a jet suit that enables them to, to fly. Uh, they really are flying from an inflatable boat and uh, and really flying over the ocean and really landing on uh, this Navy ship. It's really cool. It's um, a demonstration by a, a company called Gravity and uh, they've been around for a while. Uh, I've known about them since uh, an episode of Savage Builds, uh, which is uh, hosted by Adam Savage. He was one of the hosts of Myth Mythbusters and uh, he wanted to build a an Iron Man suit, and they did a great job. They built a, a, a suit that um, was functional enough, and then they brought in uh, the CEO, Richard Browning, and Richard Browning actually flew the suit, and he flew it with the same technology that you're seeing those uh, soldiers using as they land on, on that ship. He started the, the company in, in early 2016, and uh, by October that year, he had a, a functioning prototype that could fly. Um, I started I started filming my my movie, uh, Dangerous to Know, in early 2016, and uh, in 2020 I had a world premiere. But I still don't have uh, worldwide distribution. Not that I'm jealous. The suit's got 1,050 horsepower. Browning says that's more than a Bugatti Veyron in nearly one and a half Indy cars. It's phenomenal. Uh, it sells at $440,000 though, so it's not cheap. Another thing that uh, Browning did that uh, had caught my attention is uh, he was on a, a television show in Europe and uh, landed a, just a few feet in front of Tom Cruise. And I was thinking there's, there's no way Tom Cruise isn't thinking he's uh, gonna work that into one of his movies. I'm thinking the same thing about the the ad adaptation of the post-human movies. I, I think it's possible that we could actually do the super soldier sequences uh, practically now, and uh, and by practically I mean uh, wouldn't have to wouldn't have to fake the flying. It'd be extremely cool. Browning's uh, vision is 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 pretty fascinating, and I thought that was something that would be uh, important to talk about. Um, what he says is that he wanted to really go and tackle a challenge that was largely considered to be impossible. The idea that human beings could fly. Uh, having gone and achieved it, it's opened the door into a whole new realm of human capability, really human possibility. Uh, I, I love that quote and it, it's it makes it difficult for me to not like him. Uh, I, I'm a futurist. Uh, I do it in a in a different way than he does. Um, but I think the thinking that allows me to um, write the post-human series and and write about super soldiers flying in in 2012, uh, and then uh, and then again in Superhuman, so my most recent book in that in that series, book six. Um, I think the same thinking is what led to that flight suit actually being real. Thinking outside the box is, is uh, a, a term that's become a bit of a, just a, a buzz term, really. And 
Uh, most people don't know where it originates, but it was a media theorist named Marshall McLuhan, actually out of the University of Toronto. And uh, he wrote in, uh, in, a, in a book that he uh, titled The Medium is the Massage, uh, because it was, um, uh, it was mistyped. It was a typo uh, when the when the cover was put together, and he left it. He liked it because it, it fit so well. Obviously, it was uh, supposed to be called "The Medium is the Message," but uh, um, the fact that the the medium screwed up uh, tickled him, I guess, and so he decided to have the book go out with "The Medium is the Massage" as the title. He, he brilliantly pointed out that what the box is isn't. Uh, just some sort of business vernacular about being creative. It's it's much more uh, pervasive and insidious than that. It's uh, the culture um, convincing the majority of people that something isn't possible. Uh, just because something hasn't been done, that therefore uh, it could never be done. And that stops people from even trying to achieve those things. And it's, uh, it's a shame. It stops a lot of people from doing pretty incredible uh, stuff. Stuff like building a flying suit, for instance. Knowing about McLuhan and understanding um, McLuhan's view that, and I 100% agree with him, that we see the future through the flavor of the most recent past. Um, he called it a rear view mirror society, and I, I love that metaphor. The idea that we go into the future, but our eyes are always on the past. And, uh, and we're afraid to do anything that's uh, anything more than just a incremental. Uh, so as a science fiction writer and a futurist, when you think about science fiction, or at least the, the general public thinks about science fiction, uh, well, we used to have ships that were on the water. We still do. What in the hell's diversity? <clears throat> well, I, I could be wrong, but I believe uh, diversity is an old, old wooden ship that was used during the Civil War era. Ron, I would be surprised if the affiliates were concerned about the lack of an old, old wooden ship, but nice try. And so when we have ships in space, um, we'll have a captain and there'll, there will be a, an aft and a port and a stern. And um, Star Trek is absolutely submarines for sure. There's, uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, Gene Roddenberry made uh, no bones about the fact that uh, it, was, it was based on the Navy. Uh, Starfleet is essentially the US, US Navy. Um, Instead of guns, we have laser pistols. Uh, and, and, and that became really the, the vernacular. I mean, it's usually what we see, and it's still what we see in um, science fiction like Star Wars, which I, I love Star Wars, uh, but it was purposely supposed to be a throwback. It was supposed to seem like a, a Western, like Flash Gordon. Um, when I had the that magical night, the inspiration for, for Posthuman. Um, when the concept for the plot came to me, when it came time to actually create the world, I, I was set free by knowing about Marshall McLuhan and uh, actually thinking about what thinking outside the box really meant. And it, what it really means is that you think about everything logically and fundamentally and, and so, uh, when I was looking into the future and thinking about how we might solve some of our problems and make the world better, one of the things uh, that I considered was the, the mind's eye, which is uh, uh, very similar to what Elon Musk is trying to do with this startup Neuralink for real now. Um, immortality was another one of the things that you don't see very much in science fiction. Uh, you see it a bit more now, but without question, uh, at some point, the the human body is uh, is going to be uh, immortal. 
it will eventually figure out how to turn off the, the aging process and repair all the damage that we, that we do to our body so that we can uh, set ourselves at whatever age that we choose. And so that's why I, I included it. And another major one was flight. Um, and that one was, was very outside the box for, for 2005. The books first came out in uh, 2009. And back then, uh, I would sometimes get some reviews that were, this is like way out there. This is crazy, this could never happen. Never get those reviews anymore. <laughs> And, uh, and that's, uh, in my opinion, because um, when you, when you lose, use logic and reason instead of being trapped inside the box, then uh, you come to conclusions that might seem pretty remarkable to, uh, to a lot of people. Um, but if you really take the time and you think about it, uh, they, make, they make a lot of sense. And it makes the future more exciting and it's part of uh, it's part of why I'm uh, such an optimist, because uh, when I think about those logical practicalities and, um, and where things are headed and the fact that the future is going to happen one way or, or another, uh, it's actually way more fantastic than what was, what was previously imagined. And I think what the majority of people imagine. So I think that Richard Browning is also uh, a futurist um, and uh, he thinks of things in ways that I think are are similar to the ways that I was thinking when I was just creating a fictional world but he thinks that way in the real world and I, I love that um, I think intuitively when we see those those guys wearing those suits and and flying around that must be extremely dangerous um, and there's definitely a danger factor, but he points out, uh, and uh, this makes a lot of sense, that the five gallon reservoir with jet fuel that you've got in, the, in your backpack that you wear um, is probably safer than riding a motorbike around on public roads, Browning says. Uh, so I, I love that because when you think about it, if you're riding a motorcycle, you actually have the gas tank right there between your legs and it's it's more combustible than the fuel that's used in uh, that backpack. So uh, the future of super soldiers, will, will we have super soldiers in combat? Uh, well, we've got super soldiers. I mean, it's, it's undeniable. Uh, that was a, a test of gravity suit, but those were um, guys in the military flying and uh, Part of why I posted it was because for, for those who have read Superhuman, without me spoiling anything, um, there's a, there is a scene that in my mind, and I'm sure in the imaginations of uh, a lot of the readers, um, would have looked a lot like that. A group of super soldiers land on a, on a big ship and it is, uh, it is an assault. Um, if the suits prove to be practical beyond what they clearly are practical for, which is uh, uh, rescue missions, uh, it, the possibility of being able to, to board a ship, I suppose, for just um, non-hostile inspection, then, uh, then yeah, why, why wouldn't they be in combat? And if, uh, if you don't believe me, the non-fictional people in a position to make uh, sure something like that would happen, sure think so. Uh, in 2019, the UK Defense Secretary at the time was Gavin Williamson, and he mused uh, about using the suits in combat missions. He said, can you imagine doing an assault onto a ship? <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, had not, I had not read that when I wrote the stuff in Superhuman. He said in the future, he'd like to have uh, have a go, there could be a bigger order. Uh, he's imagining uh, as the as the suits get get even better and as the costs come down, that uh, you you may have uh, a lot more of those uh, suits on uh, soldiers in combat, at least in the UK. And I'm sure if it's uh, successful, that um, that other countries will follow suit. Uh, so amazing. The uh, future is definitely more 
more incredible than maybe most people thought. Um, okay, so here's a, another review. We always uh, shine a light on um, uh, on someone who took the time to review one of our books on, on Amazon. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to leave links to uh, some of the videos that I showed in, in this video, uh, some of the, the clips and some of the stories in the description. Um, Tribe, you are amazing. Uh, please remember to like this video and uh, comment if you've got any questions. It, it's always very, very possible that it'll turn into uh, uh, another video that I do soon. Um, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.